Tayshawn Prince. He's been the hottest player in the league in recent weeks. Freshman Jason Parker, Gerald Fitch. Fitch, of course, has been the catalyst for the Wildcats turning their season around and one of the best three-point shooters percentage-wise in the league. Keith Bogan's their leading scorer and their only senior, the point guard, Saul Smith. And for the Volunteers, in the absence of Tony Harris, they will start Ron Slay. Slay usually comes off the bench, but he is one of their mainstays, averaging 13 points and five rebounds a game. And the most consistent uh, player, really, on the floor, both ends of the floor for the Volunteers lately, has been John Higgins. Higgins scored 16 against Arkansas a week ago and has done a good job of running the offense for the Volunteers as well. So the Tennessee Volunteers hosting the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky goes for the sweep. And these two teams, of course, don't much care for each other. It's always a battle when they get together. The latest renewal in Knoxville. Who will emerge as number one? Masterful job of turning this team around. Uh, the quickest to 100 wins at Kentucky. Uh, faster than anyone other than Adolph Rupp, the legendary Baron of the Bluegrass. And Jerry Green embattled somewhat uh, with Tennessee fans in his fourth season, the AP Coach of the Year in the Southeastern Conference in 1998, and hoping to turn things around now for the Volunteers who have hit the slide. In Knoxville, UK has a one-game lead, but Tennessee has taken three of the last five. And here in this building, Thompson Bowling Arena, Kentucky, has a 7-6 advantage. Mike Wood, Rick Crawford, Brian Kersey are the officials for tonight's game. In the opening tap controlled by Tennessee. To open the game in January at Rupp Arena, I thought Kentucky got after Tennessee defensively about as hard as any team I had ever seen take it to the other. Yarbrough, no defense there, as he takes it unmolested down the baseline to score the game's first bucket. Tom, I would agree with you. Kentucky got off to that 12-2 start in Lexington and really was never headed, even though Tennessee cut it a couple of times to four. Today, different story. They're playing in Knoxville and a good start for the Volunteers. I also thought in that game, Kentucky was able to feed off a Rupp Arena crowd as loud as I'd ever heard them. And let's see if Tennessee can feed from the home crowd here at Thompson Bowling. Parker double team, got it back out to Fitch. Shot clock at eight. And stolen by Tennessee. Yarbrough takes it to the rim and draws the foul. Tayshawn Prince with the game's first foul. Well, it looks like Vincent Yarborough has come to play tonight. Tennessee crowd has really received a lot of criticism for the way they have prepared to get ready this for, this season, for this season. Tonight, they have all the motivation in the world. They've got Kentucky in town. Yarborough with a nice baseline cut. Foul actually was on Saul Smith as he uh, reached into foul before uh, Prince got him with the body. So Yarborough at the line for a pair of free throws. Tom, I really thought coming into the year, this was one player that you could register as uh, one of the three or four guys within the league that could be candidate for player of the year. He's had a good year, but he hasn't had the type of year I think a lot of people expected him to have. Top scorer for them at Rupp Arena with those 21 points. And he has all four of Tennessee's points early here. A little backcourt pressure from the Volunteers. And Kentucky throws it away. Yarbrough. Boy, it's Jarbo off to a great start. That'll get this crowd whipped into a frenzy. He's got a half dozen, and Kentucky looking rattled. Here's another near steal. Smith saves it. Bogans a long three. Keith Bogans hits the trifecta. Tough shot. I want to tell you what. What a time to make a three. That quiets the crowd. The bench sits down. The people sit down. On the low post, Victor up and under and got right by Prince. That's a tough matchup there for Tayshawn Prince. Isaiah Victor equally as quick as he is and is very adept at taking that ball and going to that baseline with that drop step. Tennessee by five. Bogans, another three. This one's short and rebounded by Higgins. Well, Tennessee really pushing the ball tonight. Normally that's the job of Tony Harris, but without him, they're still up tempo. Now they'll set it up on the half court. Higgins has done uh, a pretty wonderful job of running this team. Uh, they are most productive in the half court offense when he is directing them. Victor misses a three, but Hathaway gathers the offensive board. Up and under, and one, Charles Hathaway. Great ball fake by Hathaway. He got Jason Parker to bite. 
He laid it right in front of him. Parker looked at it, jumped up in the air, and Hathaway took the blow and got the basket. Watch this. Good spin move. Good ball fake. Jump up and under, take it, and then get the basket. Good concentration by Hathaway. Tennessee hitting four of their first five shots. Hathaway bricks the free throw, however, and Prince gathers the carom. Here's Bogans pushing for Kentucky. Parker fumbled it away. Higgins to Slay. And Slay. And one. Tennessee is doing to Kentucky what Kentucky did to Tennessee in Lexington. They have jumped off to a 12-3 start. Quick out of the gate. Tayshawn Prince committing that foul. Watch again. Great ball movement. Slay. Good, strong power move inside. The cross back over and Prince with a foul. And Ron Slay, who always does his best to pump up the crowd, was out here trying to get them excited even before the game and with his antics. Can't hit the free throw for the three-point play. Still, as Parker rebounds, the balls are up 12-3, hitting five of their first six shots. Kentucky's only gotten two looks at the basket. They had three turnovers. Fitch nearly committed another, and he's bailed out by a foul on Isaiah Victor. Yeah, he uh, kind of got shoved a little bit as Victor was trying to get down to pick up the ball, and he pushed him out of the way. Fitch is slipping right in front of that screen right there. There's Victor trying to get around Prince, and he goes down, and then he bumps him as he comes around. Tennessee's in a straight man-to-man -man defense. Prince, a three. Long rebound, chased down by Parker. Kentucky is shooting exclusively from the perimeter. And then Smith sails it into the uh, orange-shirted students right behind the cheerleaders. Kentucky's fourth turnover in less than three minutes. They tried to lob one up there, and uh, Smith just simply threw it over the top of Bogan's head. Kentucky straight man-to-man. -man. Both clubs uh, open up with nothing but man-to-man -man defense. Here's Higgins once again at the point and directing the offense. This Tennessee team has been criticized as selfish and unmotivated in recent weeks and trying to make a statement to start this game. You know, Jerry Green already off of the bench telling his club, giving them instructions about the half-court game. Take a look at the Saul Smith pass over the Keith Bogan's hands. No way he could reach that, unless he was a cheerleader. Ten to shoot. Yarbrough for three. Off-balance shot, not there. Slay puts it up, no good. And Bogans out, muscles Slay for the rebound. And Ron Slay's called for the foul. His first. I'll tell you what, give Bogans credit for a pretty good uh, defensive rebound right there because Slay was right next to him. I think Slay was a little frustrated with missing that in-close shot. Tried to come back very quickly to get the rebound, and Bogans was right there to pull it down. It was a very physical battle. Slay cleared out that time, as you saw. And Bogans got it, and then Slay called for the foul. He could have been called earlier, actually. Good battle between two good players, Ron Slay and Keith Bogans. Very physical. Jerry Green indicating to the officials there's something on the floor out here, and I'm not sure what this is about. I didn't see anything on the floor, did you? Our eyes are failing a little bit, Larry. I didn't want to bring it up, but there's some ice out there. That's okay, Tom. <laughs> you can bring it up. You have had a birthday recently. 12-3, <laughs> Tennessee lead. It's been all volunteers early, dominating the early minutes of the game. Bogans off a screen for three. And one. And they're Bogans. Going I think it's going to be Yarborough on the push. It looked like Prince set the screen. Bogans came off of it. Terrific job on the screen by Kentucky, freeing Bogans for the three. You'll see the foul occur. Watch the middle of your screen. There's the push right there. Not only did it get the basket, but they get the ball back, back a potential five or six point play here. Three point basket counts. The foul was not on the shooter Bogans, but on Prince, who is pushed there. So it's a common foul. Possession, Kentucky. Low post, Parker against Hathaway. Wow! He made it as he landed on his backside, his first basket, and a tough one. Tom, how about a five-point play for Kentucky? Got him back in this game. They're now only down four. That'll do it, won't it? Yep, five-point plays help. Long three, short from Higgins. Fitch on a run out to Smith. Put it up and in. 
Smith beats the defense down court. First basket for Saul. Fitch made the pass. It's a two-point game. John Higgins a little tardy getting back. Saul Smith, good recognition to see the floor wide open and a good pass by Fitch. Fitch with a steal. Smith leads the Kentucky break. Here's Fitch against Hathaway, and he's fouled. Nice play by the two guards right now. Saul Smith and Gerald Fitch doing a good job of looking for each other. Jerry Green is saying, what has happened to my lead? <laughs> How quickly Kentucky has come back. Fitch with a nice pass out in front and a terrific catch by Saul Smith at one hand and still able to keep his balance, find the basket, and get it in. 7-0 run for the Cats in just two minutes. If you went to the concession stand, Tennessee was ahead 12-3. to You come back and look what's happened. Just a moment ago, it looked like Tennessee was going to run away with things early. And Kentucky has come back. Here's Brian Staff in for Tennessee. Stone for Kentucky. And Hayslip is also in for the Volunteers. Marcus Hayslip, 6'10", sophomore from Lewisburg. Jenis Grindstaff, 6'2", junior from Spruce Pine, North Carolina. And for Kentucky, Marvin Stone, 6'10", sophomore, Huntsville, Alabama. Tom, one of the things that Tennessee has really struggled with this year is playing on the road. They have lost five straight Southeastern Conference games, but they have yet to lose in Knoxville this year. And speaking of struggling, Kentucky struggles at the free throw line next to last in the conference. Fitch missed that one. Hit one of two to make it a one-point game. Higgins trying to find somebody open underneath. Shot clock at eight. Higgins got a step on Fitch. Made the fake. Couldn't hit the shot. Hathaway slapped out by Stone, but right to Higgins. Slay for three. And Prince has a chance to give Kentucky the lead. Tayshawn Prince for three. The speed top. Oh, my goodness. Tom, you said it earlier. He's playing as well as anybody in this conference right now. He has actually led this Kentucky club for about the last month. And Kentucky has its biggest lead. Tennessee hitting five of their first six shots. They've missed five in a row. And Kentucky, which started so slowly with four turnovers early, has come back to go in front. Traveling call on Ron Slay. Second Tennessee turnover. How quickly things have turned around in Knoxville. Kentucky leads 14-12. One of three and turned the ball over four times. Hawkins missing for the Wildcats just into the game. Rebounded by Hayslip. Since that time, Kentucky has hit all four of their shots, and Tennessee has missed all five of theirs. J.P. Blevins also on the floor for the Wildcats. Bogans has got Yarborough. It's a pretty good defensive matchup for Bogans. From a weight standpoint, they pretty well match up. Yarborough's got a couple of inches on him in size. Harris Walker in for John Higgins in the timeout. Brian Staff rebounded by Prince. Four minutes, Tennessee has gone without scoring, and Hawkins slipping and turning the ball over. Tom, I got to tell you, that's about the third or fourth time I've noticed tonight that the players are slipping on the floor out here. And two of them have occurred right in that area where Hawkins slipped. Five turnovers by Cliff Hawkins, who has been counseled by his coach, Tubby Smith, to ease it off a little bit. Uh, he sometimes gets a little out of control. I think that adrenaline is pumping for the freshman right now in this game. First visit to Thompson Bowling. Here's Vincent Yarbrough vacant, uh, ending an over four-minute drought for the Volunteers. He has eight of their 14 points. Bogans rejected by Hayslip. That's not unusual. Tennessee leads the Southeastern Conference in blocks at a little over six per game. They've got four guys in the top ten in that category. Watch this nice move by Yarborough right here. Kind of a back off. Gets it over Stone, who's got the outreached arm. Forget it. Yarborough too tough down there. Nice spin right here by Bogans, but look at the defensive play right here. Keep it out of here. Hayslip with the block. 
And Kentucky puts it in play with 24 on the shot clock. Blevins for three. Kentucky's sharp three-point shooting continues. Blevins in on the act. They've hit four of five from the three-point arc. Tom J.P. Blevins coming off a pretty good game against Mississippi State. He had eight points and shot the ball well and handled it well in the absence of Saul Smith, who, who had a knee problem the other day in that Mississippi State game. Slay with a screen for Yarbrough. Picked up by Marvin Stone and slapped away momentarily by Hawkins. Yarbrough got it back. Walker, tough shot, got it. Harris Walker's first basket. Well, he took it right into traffic. Prince was ready, ready to come up and get it, and he already had it gone by the time he got over to help. Kentucky by one. Prince for three. Wow. The three-point shooting has been a valuable weapon in the comeback for the Cats. Tayshawn Prince has two of the three-pointers. Tom, they almost seem to be getting better we as the weeks go by with their three-point shooting. Improved dramatically, dramatically from the beginning of the season. And remember, last season, Kentucky shot a record low, 29% from the arc. Hayslip comes up short. Stone clears it to Blevins. Hawkins penetrates. And a Tennessee foul. Ron Slay committing his first foul. Let's go back and take a look at Harris Walker right here. A little dribble between the legs and taking it right at Prince and by Hawkins. And Prince tried a sort of a half-hearted uh, effort right there defensively, but Prince followed up on the other end with a three. Several that Kentucky has made here in the first half. That was the second foul on Slay, by the way. That could be a key factor here. Look at that three-point shooting, five of six. And the Volunteers still firing blanks. Marquis Estel and Cliff Daniels, or Eric Daniels, in for the uh, Wildcats as Bogans and Prince go out. I'll tell you what, it's hard to catch up when you're playing against a team that's shooting five out of six from three-point land. That is really good. So Kentucky has four subs on the floor. Not unusual for Tubby Smith to go to five fresh players here in the uh, midway point of the half. And... Over the last six minutes, Tubby Smith's Wildcats have gone on a 19-4 run. They lead by six. Kentucky leads 22-16. And earlier this season, in January at Rupp Arena, Tennessee was fourth in the country. Both teams unbeaten in the SEC as they met. And Kentucky raced out to that 12-2 lead. Their defense for the game held... Tennessee to only 38% shooting and forced them into 22 turnovers. Keith Bogans had 21 points. Tayshawn Prince had 16 to lead the Kentucky scoring. Vincent Yarbrough matched Bogans 21 for Tennessee. But the 22 turnovers and poor shooting undid the balls as Kentucky won it by 10, 84-74. Kentucky's uh, only gotten two points, or excuse me, the volunteers. Gotten only two points from the backcourt. The Wildcats have been shooting from three-point range and hitting from three-point range. What is it, Tennessee Long Rifles and Kentucky Windage? Isn't that what it is? Kentucky's five of six from three-point range, and Tennessee is 0 for 4. Brian Staff against Blevins, and Tennessee sets it up. After enjoying a nine-point lead earlier. Huh? Ooh, big bucket. Harris Walker for three. He has five points off the Tennessee bench. I'm not sure about the shot selection early in the possession, but when it goes in, you can't argue. Looks like one of those Larry Bird set shots, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, he didn't jump at all. Hawkins with a floater. Hawkins having a good start to this game. We have Hawkins, the freshman, with four. 6-1 freshman, Dumfries, Virginia. Another one of those guys on this, this freshman class that Kentucky has that's gotten better as the year's gone along. Good block inside. Eric Daniels with a good block. Daniels rejected Victor, and Kentucky takes it the other way. And Daniels got right up around Yarbrough, missed it. Stone's follow flies out of his hand, and Grindstaff has it for the balls. Yarbrough. Missed the finger roll. Esto clears to Blevins. Here's a three-on-two Kentucky break. Daniels walked. Nope, got him for a player control oh. foul. Did they? A foul? Yep. 
Well, it was bad, whatever it was. It was. And you could see it coming. Yep. Blevins, was, who had the ball, kind of got in no man's land right there. He was too far on the left side and tried to reach back and hand the ball instead of bouncing the ball to him. The spacing was never good. Never good. From the, from the midcourt line on. Seventh Kentucky turnover. Grindstaff enters it to the post. Victor flashes back out to Yarbrough, guarded by Daniels. Got a screen and shot an air ball. Bad looking shot by Yarbrough. Points off turnovers. Stone, open 18 footer. Well, Kentucky is absolutely scored at scorching the nets right now. They can't miss. And they're getting open looks by the dozens. Seems like that. <laughs> Seven point Kentucky lead. Kentucky shooting 64% early. Grindstaff launches a three. And rebounded by Estel. Here's the outlet to Daniels. Two on two. Levin spotted at the three point line. Calls for it. Shoots. No good. And Victor had it for a moment. Picked up by Walker. Here's Grindstaff running the court. Fouled by Hawkins. Tom, let's go back and take a look at that fast break that you and I were talking about with Blevins handling the basketball. You're going to see Eric Daniels fill the lane on the left side. You see he's in the middle of the floor. Now he has nowhere to make the pass. You're right. There is no spacing whatsoever right there. <laughs> really, he had nowhere to go. Eric Daniels committing the player control foul going the other way. It had a uh, disaster written all over from the midcourt line on. Saul Smith returns for Kentucky. Terrence Woods is in the Tennessee lineup for the first time. 6'3 sophomore from Memphis. And Hathaway is also returned. And Higgins is back as well. Kentucky's gone to a 1 3 1 zone. Saul Smith on the point. Smith replacing Hawkins. Hawkins, of course, suffers from asthma and sometimes it limits his playing time. Daniels had another block. And then Tennessee steps out of bounds. Victor on the baseline. Tennessee's third turnover. What about Daniels? Two block shots already. Pretty nice work again by Eric Daniels down inside. Tony Harris watching from the Tennessee bench in street clothes. A little solidarity with a headband maybe. That's about the only contribution from Harris tonight. Tennessee players falling all over each other and Kentucky turns it over that that was ugly both ends well I mean Eric Daniels makes a good pass Marvin Stone didn't have his hands ready you know if a guy's breaking down the middle and you're standing wide open on the block get your hands up and get ready to catch the pass Kentucky's ball handling has been sloppy they've succeeded by hot shooting open look for three from Higgins and he got it nicely done Stone came out he was late getting there Higgins having a good first half for Tennessee. Marvin Stone drives on Hathaway. Jump hook, rimmed out. Estel with a follow is fouled by Victor. Boy, Estel up there quickly to get that ball against one of the SEC's better rebounders and Isaiah Victor. Marquise, da Marquise Daniels very quickly getting up there. Higgins, Higgins. Higgins with a nice turn and look. I said Daniels, I meant Estel. Estel really got up there quickly behind Victor. And I think Isaiah Victor is as good a rebounder as this league's got. Well, he's ninth in the league in rebounding, averaging about seven boards a game, and he's picked up his second foul, has Isaiah Victor. Higgins, the top three-point sharpshooter in the SEC, showing you why on that last basket by the Volunteers. Ron Slay, playing with two fouls, has returned for Tennessee. Tayshawn Prince. It's back for Kentucky, so is Gerald Fitch. And Marquise Estel, after hitting the free throws, checks to the bench, replaced by Jason Parker. So, Tubby Smith has all five starters back on the court. Parker with Prince, Bogans, Fitch, and Smith. Well, Tom, I'm going to tell you something. Tubby Smith has got things going his way right now. This, these guys coming off the bench play as well as the starters right now. Brian Staff to Woods. A 15-footer is good for Terrence Woods. It's his first shot. Good smart move. Step inside. You don't have the three-point shot. Take one or two steps and shoot the little mid-range jumper. Tennessee back within four up momentarily as Bogans knocks down another three. Bogans with nine points early. Here's Woods. Missed it with a left hand. Fitch and Woods battle for it. Out of bounds. Which way? Tennessee's ball. 
the three point shot has been the chief weapon in the Kentucky arsenal here in the first half. They've hit six of eight. The latest by Bogans puts them up by seven. Kentucky Wildcats who once trailed by nine enjoying their biggest lead of this first half now up seven on Tennessee. But no one knows SEC basketball like JP Sports and you can check it out online at jpsports.com. Each week we'll have our broadcast schedule and affiliate list, previews of upcoming games, conference news, many other exciting features all at jpsports.com. Check some other SEC scores in action at uh, Auburn. The Tigers lead the Razorbacks by five. Tie game at Athens. And Alabama by three. Ole Miss, the Western Division leader, trailing at home to Mississippi State early. Ron Slay trying to muscle it up. And uh, could not get it down. Here's Bogans for Kentucky. It almost looked like he was trying to shoot through the shirt of Keith Bogans. Uh, it was no place to be in there with all the blue shirts. Prince misfires a three out of bounds off the rim to Tennessee. Slay would have done better to flash it back outside. He was triple teamed. Lucky he didn't get called for a walk or three seconds. Three point shooting. Kentucky now six of nine. Tennessee two of seven. Overall, Kentucky now 10 of 18 from the field. Kentucky stays in that 2-3 zone. Wildcats comeback is effectively taking the crowd out of it. Hathaway, low post. Back to Grindstaff, eight to shoot. Slay fumbled it out of bounds. Tough pass from Grindstaff, yeah, too close. That was not a good pass. Grindstaff got into heavy traffic down there and he was expecting Slay to bail him out in there. And it really, there was nowhere to go with the pass because he had a couple of Kentucky defenders fooling with the ball up there and Slay last, was the last one to touch it. Four Tennessee turnovers. And the Wildcats have doubled them. And still lead by seven. And now Tennessee's gone to his own. They're in a 2-3, maybe a 2-1-2 match. Prince, smart move, took it away, got it out of there, didn't get himself in trouble. Prince for three. The way Kentucky's been shooting threes, I don't know about zoning them. I don't know if you want to give him any three-point looks. Tayshawn Prince hitting a three-pointer, his third. I was watching Ron Slay, who came out to guard him on that particular shot. He looked over at Jerry Green with his hands, palms faced up to the heavens, saying, what can I do? Higgins backs it out. Ten-point Kentucky lead, the biggest for either team. And a 19-point turnaround for the Wildcats. Air ball. Hathaway sailing out of bounds, calls a timeout to save possession. It'll be a 30-second timeout. And the fans here at Thompson Bowling seem shocked much by the turn of events. Kentucky leads by 10. with a 10-point lead at the 6.07 mark of the first half in Knoxville. Well, basketball fans, we have a challenge for you. Log on to jpsports.com to play the Pick the Winners and Win the Whole Enchilada Contest presented by Don Pablo's Restaurants. You'll be eligible to win weekly prizes as well as a grand prize trip for two to one of the biggest basketball tournaments in the South. jpsports.com and Don Pablo's want you to win the Whole Enchilada. Buck and uh, Tucky hitting 11 of 19. Saul Smith, by the way, with four assists early. Tennessee, 10 of 26 shooting. You remember they opened up by hitting five of six, so they're only five of their last 20 shots. Tayshawn Prince has hit three of four from the arc. In fact, Tennessee had jumped off to a 12 to three lead in this basketball game before Kentucky has made this gigantic run. Higgins pops a three. Good rebound, good strong rebound inside by Woods. And Woods takes his turn. Why not? <laughs> you, you battle that hard to go get the rebound, take this shot yourself. Terrence Woods has five points. <laughs> Nearly a steal by Yarborough, mistimed it just barely. Kentucky gets it back with 21 on the shot clock. Good defensive effort that time by Yarborough. Now Tennessee came out of that zone defense. They've gone back to their man-to-man. -man. Tayshawn Prince three. 
seal the fate of the zone. Got to get out to those shooters. Now does Kentucky go to the inside? Good screen by Parker for Bogans. Jarbar doing a nice job on Bogans. Five to shoot. Parker from Bogans. How about the little pick and roll? The two-man game down underneath. Bogans and Parker operating to perfection. Woods for three. I don't understand that. A bad shot, it would seem, when you're trying to mount a comeback. Here's a steal by Higgins, scrapping with Prince and getting possession. Woods with another three. And Slay somehow got it with Bogans and Prince scraped all over him. Here's Yarbrough, put it through. Oh, that's a nice move. Okay, Vincent Yarbrough can put it on the floor and get to the basket as quick as anybody his size in the country. That was a good quick move against one of the better defenders on Kentucky's team, Saul Smith. He has double figures, does Yarbrough. Here's Bogans, and that's not a good shot selection. A bad looking three. So discipline sort of breaking down on both ends of the court here with some rushed three point shots. I repeat what I said to you uh, last Saturday, I think it was, as Hathaway misses underneath. The uh, next coach, Jeff Van Gundy, says that three-point line's like a dog fence. They're afraid they're going to get shocked. They don't want to go past it. They want to stop and shoot. <laughs> Watch this nice move down inside. Keith Bogan's coming down, bouncing the ball right into Parker's hands. Slay was late getting there, and Hathaway couldn't turn around quickly enough to get the ball. Yarborough with a good, quick move. Vincent Yarborough loves to play against Kentucky. He's having another good game. And Bogan's loves to play against Tennessee. Bogans uh, averaging 19 points and five boards in his games against the balls. Hayslip misses. Yarbrough kept it alive, but Slay couldn't control it. Four oh eight left in the first half. It's been a dramatic change in fortunes here. At one point, Tennessee led by nine. Kentucky has been up by as many as ten. Tom, I just uh, saw one of the officials warn both Saw Smith and Ron Slade to back off of the verb verbiage right now. These two guys have been going at each other for a while. Daniels gives it back to Prince and to Smith. Fitch penetrates. Floater no good. Short. Got his own rebound to hit the underside of the rim. Third time the charm for the battling freshman Gerald Fitch. What an effort. I want to tell you what, there were bigger people in there all around him, and they still came up with it. Daniels and Yarbrough scrapping, and Daniels got it away. Smith, the pitch on the runout, and he lost it. It flew out of his hands. Nobody around. That was a strange sequence of events there. Slay shoots a three. Brick. On the follow. Hayslip battling and will go to the line. Marcus Hayslip hitting the offensive board. And will go to the free throw line. Let's go back again and watch Gerald Fitch, the freshman out of Macon, Georgia, doing his work inside. Somehow or another, this young man comes up with more offensive rebounds. Look at this. Tennessee player standing around and watching him put it back in underneath. But right here, he couldn't <laughs> hold on to this one. Oh, all gone. Ouch. Martin Hayslip on the other end, getting ready to shoot these free throws. Did a pretty good job on the offensive glass that time. Not a very good job of shooting that free throw, though. <laughs> Normally pretty good, Marcus. Mm -hmm, he is. 79%. The three-point shot continues to bedevil the Volunteers. They're three of ten. Actually, that's not horrible, but compared to what Kentucky's been shooting. And he misses both free throws. Tennessee's two of six at the free throw line. Things have unraveled in a hurry for the Volunteers in the first half. Fitch for three. Uh, Everybody's great, in it. Great pass by Eric Daniels. He got into the middle, found his fellow freshman over on the wing. I'm going to tell you, Kentucky is lighting it up right now. Eight of 12 from three-point range. Slay, double team, muscles it through. Yeah, you always get those guys that can score underneath. They find a way to get the ball up. And Slay, Slay, Slay averaging, Parker. averaging 13 a game later. That's his fourth point of his first half, so they've held him in check. Watch again. Tubby Smith off of the bench, watching his offense perform right here. It's been Gerald Fitch leading the way in the first half with a lot of other cats. They're up 10. 
And Kentucky continues its tour of the state of Tennessee Saturday. Some of you will see the Cats take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. The Bogans Fitch Prince combination for Kentucky facing the Greg LaPointe led Commodores. Cats looking for the sweep of Andy. Others will see the West clash between LSU and Arkansas. Joe Johnson's Razorbacks chasing Alabama and Ole Miss in the SEC West. And Ron DePree's Tigers after the big effort against Florida looking for their second SEC win. Kentucky Vanderbilt or LSU Arkansas. It all starts at 1 Eastern. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Kentucky fans at Thompson Bowling as well as there always are. And in the ACC, Virginia leading Duke by three. And Wake with a big lead on the Yellow Jackets. Foul called on Vincent Yarborough. That's his second foul. Kentucky now has Blevins, Estel, Smith, Bogans, and Stone on the court. And Saul Smith at the free throw line. He's having a good night. Good floor game. You said earlier he had four assists. I don't know if he's picked up any more earlier. I mean later, but uh, missed an easy foul shot there, as they all are if you stand up there and just concentrate. Missed a free throw. Uh, Smith is sixth in the SEC in assists and tenth all-time at Kentucky coming into the game with 320. And adding uh, to that total here tonight. Here's Slay passing up the shot. Tennessee with a lot better ball movement this trip. Walker penetrates, got it to Slay, who missed it. Great job on everything but finishing the shot. Open look for three for Smith. Saul Smith. And he has five points. He can't make the free throw, but he can make the three. Just step back. Kentucky's three-point shooting has been amazing tonight. And Higgin, or Hayslip it is. Marcus Hayslip at 6'10", shows you his three-point shooting touch. Nice move by Saul Smith there. He had the good move around Harris Walker, was heading for the basket. Got a nudge, a little shove, and I think he's going to go back to the line again. And it's time for one plus one, as Jerry Green's team has committed now eight team fouls. Announcers for this game selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports and the use of the broadcast that the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Smith hit this one after missing there a moment ago. 72% on the season. That bruised right knee against Mississippi State on Saturday, but showing no ill effects tonight. Unless it's his free throw shooting where he's yeah. only one of three. Yarbrough fakes and drives by Stone. Estel with a help out defense. And a foul called either on Estel or Smith. Let's see. It's on Estel. His first. Once again, Yarbrough getting very quickly to the basket. The one thing that makes him so dangerous is the fact that he uh, you have to go out and respect his outside shooting ability. If you go out to guard him right there as Stone did, he can put it on the floor and get to the basket in a hurry. Vincent, the junior from Cleveland, Tennessee, highly touted in the preseason, and as Larry said, has had a good season, though not great, and has 11 points and one rebound tonight. He's already passed the 1,000 mark in his Tennessee career, 35th all-time with 1,044 points coming into tonight, so 55 now his total, 1,055. And of course, as we get into this game, it begs the question, how much does Tennessee miss Tony Harris? I mean, is, is he a big, as big a loss as we think he is? Obviously, I think more so on the defensive end than the offensive end right now with this team. Harris averages 13 points, five assists a game. And Tennessee's gotten only eight points from their starting backcourt tonight, or from their backcourt period. So Harris missing his second consecutive game, obviously missed in the lineup. And played only three minutes at Arkansas. That's the last three games. Nice pass. Marvin Stone from Estel. A little high-low action from the Kentucky big men. Nicely done. Estel with a terrific pass. Final minute of the first half. Well, Tom, it has been all Kentucky in this first half, except for the first two minutes. 
Hayslip missing a three. Rebounded by Blevins. There's a player hurt. I think it's Yarbrough. Skip pass to Bogans for three. What else? Meanwhile, Vincent Yarbrough continues to writhe in the pain back at the Tennessee free throw line. Lifting the toes of his right foot. Keith Bogans has 12 points tonight as the three point attack continues unabated in Knoxville. Kentucky's hit 10 of 14 from three point land. And Bogans individually has been one of the uh, real sharpshooters for the Wildcats in the first half, hitting four of his six attempts from there as Yarbrough helped up trying to walk it off. He's been really the only bright spot for Tennessee in this first half with 12 points. Yeah, they're going to have to either take a timeout or take him out of the game. It's one of the two. Tony Harris in street clothes. Look at the three-point shooting. In the first meeting, January 16th at Rupp Arena, they hit only 33%, 71% tonight. I predict that won't last, Larry, a brave prediction. <laughs> Don't go out on a limb now. And Tennessee hit 42-9, only 31 tonight. And Yarbrough's going to sit out the final 35.2 of this first half. Good decision. If you read body language at all, that Tennessee is uh, in some distress right now. This crowd is almost quiet. It's 20,000 people in here, and they're so quiet. 20 seconds left. Kentucky's in a zone. There's about one second uh, difference. Well, actually, the <laughs> actually the shot clock shouldn't even be on. It's it's about a second longer. Higgins for three. The SEC's best three-point shooter knocks down a much-needed bucket for the Volunteers. He has two of those as the first half comes to a close. What a turnaround in fortunes. Tubby Smith and the Wildcats trailed by nine at 12 to three. But Jerry Green saw the Wildcats come back and at halftime, Kentucky leads 50-39. SEC Basketball is brought to you by Comfort Inn. It's more than a room. It's percent for Tennessee. And from three-point range, Kentucky hitting 71%, 10 of 14. They also have out-rebounded the Volunteers. They have committed 10 turnovers. But uh, Bogans with that great shooting and Kentucky with the halftime lead. We're back for the second half from Knoxville in a moment information as well as total cast coverage of championship events throughout the year fans can also participate in online contests or shop in the expanded sec superstore so take a minute and experience the southeastern conference online at secsports.com tom hammond larry conley at thompson bowling arena for the second half bogans with 12 those are all on three-point shots tayshawn prince the same with nine yarborough 12 and higgins yarborough remember Injured his ankle late in that first half, but he's out there to start the second half. It was retaped during the intermission, and Yarbrough is out to start the second half. He joined by uh, Ron Slay with Higgins, Victor, and Hathaway as the starting five. And Kentucky uh, usually wins when they're ahead at intermission. The starting is five for the Wildcats out there, too. Didn't hear much from Isaiah Victor in that first half, only two points. Parker tried to pass it inside, instead threw it away. Slay leads the break. Victor hammered by Parker. Well, just as I said, Isaiah Victor didn't get much accomplished in the first 20 minutes. Starts out very strong here with a good, strong power move inside. Draws the foul from Parker. Nice bounce pass right here, and Victor filling the lane, getting out there, running the floor, receiving the pass. Second foul on Jason Parker as Victor toes the line. As you see, his average is 14 and 7 from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, University Heights High School. And he knocks down the free throw. He'll have one more. Really like the way he shoots the ball. He's got a nice form, good follow through. Over 1,200 points in his Tennessee career. What do you make of the uh, change in headbands for Ron Slay? He's gone to the black headband here in the second half. No comment. <laughs> Had to do something to change their luck. 
Bogan's off the screen, shoots a three. And there's a miss. That didn't happen much in the first half. That will have more to do for Tennessee success than the headband. Yarbrough slashes to the hoop, can't finish it. Hathaway stripped and fouled. Bogans with a reach in. All right, Tennessee's come out with a little fire in their eyes in this second half. Victor with a nice follow inside, drawing the foul on the fast break, and that time some offensive rebounding by the Volunteers. Keith Bogans committing his first foul, and Hathaway to the line. He has two points. Missing the free throw. He's normally a 70% shooter, the senior from Nashville. He's been struggling recently, though. He didn't score in each of the last two games. I think we got a violation. And it is. A violation will wipe out the second attempt by Hathaway. Jerry Green says, what else can go wrong? I think Vincent Yarbrough stepped into that area where the officials don't allow you to walk in there after the ball's been handed to the shooter. Tennessee's hit only 6 of 11 at the free throw line in the game. Parker Lopos banging with Hathaway. Reach in. Stripped away by Yarbrough. Kentucky gets it back. We played one minute of the second half. Parker doing a nice job of working against Hathaway. Two wide bodies in there going at it. Pretty good play by Hathaway. You got all ball. I thought it was Yarbrough on the reach in that got it away, but it was Hathaway. Fans thought it went off Parker's leg on the out of bounds. Doesn't matter. They get the rebound anyway as Prince misses a three. I told you they were going to cool off. Yeah, Kentucky's tried two threes. They're two successful guys in the first half. Both Bogans and Prince have missed to start this second half. That's the downside of hitting 71% from the arc. You fall in love with a shot. Slay missed underneath under pressure. Got it back and scored. Ron Slay. He has six. He was battling Prince and Parker underneath. Good effort that time by Ron Slay. And Good pass. Parker and one as he got the ball right at the rim and jammed it through. And Ron Slay right there in his face. Let's see if Slay got the foul. He did. It's his third. Watch Ron Slay on the offensive end go down the inside. Now there's Parker and Prince trying to defend. He goes back up strong with a good offensive rebound. And a nice play. Look at this pass down the inside by Gerald Pitch. Look at this. Good bounce pass down the inside and a good catch by Parker and the foul down in there. Who picked that one up? Well, was it Yarbrough? It was on Yarbrough. We, yeah. They said originally Slay, but it's Yarbrough. Oh, that was too easy. I think Parker just opened up that baseline, allowed Slay to get down there looking for help, and nobody came over. Back-to-back -back buckets for Ron Slay. He has eight points. And the lead cut to seven. Crowd's getting back into the game now. They sense that maybe there's some momentum shift going on here. Here's Bogans taking it to the rim. His shot no good. Parker kept it alive. And Kentucky gets it back. Tennessee's really turned up the defense to start the second half. They have indeed. Good pressure out front on Higgins on Smith. Smith back to Prince who set the screen. He gets it to Parker and the foul before the shot. Nice pass by Prince as they worked it inside to Parker. And Higgins commits this foul. Watch again this nice move down inside. See Parker turns and looks for help. There's nobody there. You've got to shut the guy off and turn him back to the inside. Ron Slay was not to be denied on that move. I can remember some of your playing career you yelling for help on one of those situations. I used to do that all the time. It's called the Matador defense. Just go Olay and watch him go by. Prince, low post, operating on Slay, jump hook, trademark, patented, Tyshawn Prince with 11. I want to tell you what, there is nobody in the country that can shoot the shot like he shoots it. <laughs> well, he has that condor wingspan. Let's go back and take a look at uh, this patented shot that Tom calls from Tayshawn Prince. And, and it is really, I mean, it's one of the more unique shots in all of college basketball. Look at this little turn. Anywhere from about eight feet for Florida it was about 10 or 12 feet out, which cost them the game on the great shot by Prince at the end to give them the win. I love the jump hook. Nobody's going to block that shot, especially with his wingspan. Meanwhile, Jason Parker has committed his third foul. He goes to the Kentucky bench and Marvin Stone replaces him. Yarbrough for three. Rimmed out. Smith has Prince. Great play. How about the pass? Saul Smith looks up, sees Prince, Prince streaking to the other end. Nicely done again by Kentucky's offense. Six assists for Saul Smith. 
Slate cleared out, pushed Bogans with the off arm, no call, and then Victor taps it in. Nice offensive rebound that time by Isaiah Victor. Fitch looks for Stone, gets it to him, facing on Hathaway. Prince for three. Got an open look. How can you forget about a three-point shooter after the first half they had? Prince now has 16 points. Deadly. Absolutely deadly. Kentucky by 12. Here's Yarbrough answering. Can't do it with a three-point. Smith had it, and then Slay took it away and pounded it home. Oh, it's tough for Smith as he blocked out Hathaway, of all people. Got the rebound, and then had to strip. Bogan's an open three. That one no good. Fitch got the offensive rebound. Puts it up. And fouled. He'll shoot. Well, maybe before the shot, maybe he will not go to the line. Yeah, they're going to say, I think he was pushed before he went up for the shot. Five rebounds now for Gerald Fitch. As we take a timeout with 15.56 on the clock, Tayshawn Prince has scored Kentucky's last seven. They lead by 10. Some of you will see Kentucky travel to Music City to take on Vanderbilt. And others will see a Western Division battle between LSU and Arkansas. It all starts at 1 o'clock Eastern time, noon Central time. Check your local listings or jpsports.com for the game in your area. Tayshawn Prince, 16 points on 6 of 9 shooting, including that 4 of 5 from 3-point range. An All-American run here of six weeks or so for Tayshawn Prince. Tom, I said this at the top of the show, and I've been saying it for the last couple of weeks. There isn't a player in the Southeastern Conference playing better than Tayshawn Prince right now. And who in the country, really? Bogans, multiple fakes, got the bucket. 14 for Keith. Ron Slay is on the loose again. Pretty jump hook. Slade drove baseline and pulled up with a jump hook. He's come alive in the second half. He has 14 points. He actually did a nice job of getting Bogus to kind of bite on that fake, and he went right over the top of him when Bogus went to the floor. He has 10 of his 14 in the second half. Bogans off a curl, left wide open. Somebody's got to guard Keith Bogans. You can't leave him that wide open. 16 for Keith. Kentucky answers, and they're up 63-51. Yarbrough. Arvin Stone said, I was just trying to hold my ground. And I guess Fitch got... Fitch, Fitch gets the foul, uh, even though Stone was protesting. So, Gerald Fitch, number one. It's nice to protest your teammate's foul. <laughs> Yarbrough, 12 points, but blank so far in the second half with 15-13 on the clock. Before a crowd of 19,341. A little surprised they didn't sell it out, especially since there are usually a lot of Kentucky fans here, too. But just under 20,000, still a good crowd. Tony Harris watching from the bench in street clothes, unable to go because of a sprained ankle. And Tennessee's free throw woes continue. Yarbrough misses the first. Cash is in on the second. There's seven of 13. Lob for Prince. Couldn't get it. Saul Smith tried to lob it for him. They set that up. 12 turnovers with the Wildcats. Yarbrough, short. Prince way up for the board. Look at those long arms. Fitch calling for it. Smith gets it to him. Slapped away. Yarbrough took it away from Prince. Good defensive play by Vincent Yarbrough there. Good hands when Prince flashed the ball in front of him. He just reached out and slapped it away from him. A slip against Stone. Blocked. Mar Marvin rejects. Here's the Kentucky break. Three on three. And they'll hold it up. Smith an open three. Saul Smith. Three-pointer. Good look. Tayshawn Prince with an excellent pass. Didn't force the issue. Got it to the wide open Saul Smith who buried it. And a few boos from the Tennessee fans here as Kentucky's opened up its biggest lead. 
Well, we told you about uh, the Saturday schedule on most of these stations. Let's look a week ahead. 8 o'clock Eastern time next Wednesday. Some of you will see these volunteers host Georgia. And others will see Kentucky at home against the LSU Tigers. Check your local listings game in your area. That's an 8 o'clock start a week from tonight. And all of this culminating for an arrival for all the clubs in Nashville, Tennessee for the Southeastern Conference Basketball Tournament. If you haven't gotten your tickets, please go get them. It's a terrific tournament this year. Won't be as many tickets available either, will there? In the, uh, no, there won't be. Not in the Georgia Dome, so the Gaylord Entertainment Center, the Nashville Arena. The scene of this year's Southeastern Conference Tournament. I'd like to pick a winner in that. I don't think so. Not right now. Isaiah Victor. And it's off Tennessee. It'll go to Kentucky. Yeah, it went off of Victor's leg. Here's Stone, the low post. Hayslip guarding him. Back out to Smith. Re entry pass. Stone's jump hook is on the money. Eighth assist for Saul Smith. Nicely done. Saul Smith having a terrific floor game today. Has nine points, too. Hand check foul. Bogans of Kentucky. Let's go back and take a look at Saul Smith delivering the ball into Stone. Marvin Stone makes himself available. That's what makes this work. That and the nice bounce pass away from the defense. He'll turn, look, put it up, jump hook. Easily done. I tell you what, Saul Smith could get a double-double tonight. You very rarely find guys getting it with points and assists. Tubby Smith, his dad, yelling, come on, Sean, go get the ball. As they were on defense in the zone. And the long rebound to Bogans. He's got Fitz and he's got Prince. And Prince lays it in from Bogans. Beautiful Kentucky break. Prince with 18. Great secondary break that time by Kentucky. Two marquee players, Bogans and Prince, have been excellent tonight as the floater goes for Isaiah Victor. Six points for Victor, who came in averaging 14. He played seven minutes of the second half. Prince for three. Oh! Tayshawn Prince has been on fire all night long. 21 points. What a game Tayshawn is having again. 8 of 11 shooting for Tayshawn Prince tonight. Ron Slay once again asking his coach, what can I do? I'm out there on him. Doesn't make any difference. Right now, Tayshawn Prince is in a zone. Isaiah Victor draws a foul on Prince as he muscles it up. Let's go back and take a look at the two guys who have been carrying Kentucky for most of this year. Keith Bogans handling the basketball, dropping the ball off to Tayshawn Prince. A little secondary break. You got a guy left and right, always watch the guy coming down the middle. And then Prince again delivering the three. Well, he's done everything tonight for Kentucky. What is Slay thinking about giving him open threes? <laughs> Gotta go he's, guard. He's five of six from the arc. Take your chance with some help if he's gonna drive, but don't let him have the three. Rims out for Victor. Prince will get a rest, replaced by Daniels. And Blevins will send Bogans to the bench. Higgins goes out for Tennessee. And Walker is in. And once again, Tubby Smith making a good decision here. Get some substitutes in there. Get some guys off of that bench. You've got some, some fresh legs. Give your starters a little bit of a blow. Well, this Tennessee crowd came primed for action tonight. Passing out orange T-shirts that said, not in my house. And it'll take a Tennessee rally to prevent that from happening. It's 73-54, or 55, excuse me. And Blevins fouled by Walker. Number two on Harris. Levitz came off of that screen down low by Daniels, and Walker fought his way around the screen, and then got to the outside and then pushed Levitz. Cliff Hawkins into the Wildcat lineup. Fellow freshman Gerald Fitch goes out, and Marquise Daniels is in for Saul Smith. And 
Kentucky calls a timeout. Trouble getting the ball in bounds. They had actually gotten it in ahead of the count, but on the other side of the floor, timeout called. 30-second timeout. It's one of those situations, you know, players and coaches are allowed to call timeouts. The head coach and the players, and no one on the floor called the timeout. That was Tubby Smith calling the timeout. If you're just joining us, Kentucky, on the strength of excellent three-point shooting throughout the game, leads Tennessee. 73-55, the Wildcats have hit 13 of 19 from the arc. That's 66% shooting. And it's hard to believe at this point that at one time, Tennessee led by nine points. You know, Tom, I've watched this Kentucky team uh, mature and develop as the year has gone along. Everybody talked about this team and about those tough losses they had early in the year when they lost those five games. A lot of them by very close margins. Auburn 42-35 on Arkansas. And the final, Georgia has with Vandy in Athens. South Carolina down 10 at Bama. And Mississippi State continues to lead Ole Miss. Didn't Mississippi State beat uh, the Rebels in Starkville? They did indeed. For the sweep of their they did indeed. Magnolia State rivals. Well, here's a, an update on that uh, terrific twosome of the Wildcats, Bogans and Prince. They've combined for 37 points on 14 of 23 shooting, 9 of 14 from three-point range. They're on the bench with a well-deserved rest. Marvin Stone, oh, it rattled out, went halfway down. Estel over the back for the foul. I'm going to say Estel uh, came up over the back of Ron Slay, who had the good inside position. Wildcats looking for their sixth consecutive win. Tom, get, to get back to that point I was talking about with Kentucky, I mean, the fact that they struggled so much early, I, and I think a lot of it had to do with the players getting to know each other. There were a lot of freshmen that came in this year, and, and Tubby Smith has gradually worked these freshmen, intermingling them with these upperclassmen, and they have really developed into a force right now. I mean, these guys, the, the upperclassmen, plus the freshmen are playing so well together, sometimes it takes a while to get to know the, the playing abilities of your teammates, particularly when you're coming in out of high school, going into college, your, your first or your second year here. Guys like Gerald Fitch, I mean, what, what a welcome addition he has been for these Wildcats. And then the play of Prince and Bogans, the way they've been doing it, and everybody else beginning to contribute. So this club really has matured as the year has gone along. Well, Wildcat fans are not known for their patience, and they were howling mightily earlier in the season. But what a job Tubby Smith has done, and right now they're one of the hottest teams in the U.S. Timeout. So you want to be a millionaire? Well, here's how. First, make plans to attend the SEC basketball tournament in Nashville, March 8th through the 11th. Second, visit the Dr. Pepper SEC Fan Fair on Thursday and Friday of tournament week and register for your chance to participate in the Dr. Pepper $1 million shootout. And third, if you're selected, make a layup, free throw, three-point shot, and half-court shot in 30 seconds, and you will be an instant millionaire. The Dr. Pepper $1 million shootout at the SEC tournament. Check jpsports.com for the official rules and regulations. Tennessee puts the ball in play, and Kentucky in a zone defense. Woods penetrates. Walker made a nice catch with Blevins going for the steal. And Woods launches it. Woods is not afraid to shoot, I will say. No, no, it will go up. It's that old black hole adage. When it hits his hands, it doesn't go back, it doesn't come back out. It just simply goes up. <laughs> Slay traveled. And Tennessee turns it over for only the eighth time in the game. Remember, one of their uh, reasons for losing in Rupp Arena was 22 turnovers. They've certainly taken care of that tonight. The problem is, the problem that they have right now is not being able to shut down Kentucky's offense. I mean, it's, it's just been devastating the way they've been shooting the ball. And Kentucky has uh, done a pretty good job on D of Jerry Green's balls. They shot 38% in the first meeting, and right now they're at 39%. Walker doing a nice job on Hawkins. And fouls him. Third foul on Harris Walker. And five now against Tennessee. Kentucky has already committed seven. A 
Hawkins waiting for things to sort out inside. Now drives on Walker and slipped down. He was pushed. And Harris Walker picks up another foul. Is it Walker or Hathaway that picked it up? Well, let's see. It was on Harris Walker. It was Walker, yeah. And that's four on Walker. He picks up two fouls in the space of uh, a few seconds. And walks dejectedly to the Tennessee bench. Grindstaff replaces him. Difficult to keep up with Cliff Hawkins. Woods takes up the defense on Hawkins now. Blevins lost it. Got it back. Ducky again playing an all-sub lineup. Marvin Stone, he's looked good offensively tonight. His touch has been perfect. Eight points. I tell you what, Ron Slay's wondering what he has to do to get some success tonight. Everybody he guards is scoring on him. Might be a trend there. <laughs> but I hope the coach doesn't pick up on that. Here's Yarbrough. As Tennessee gets its first field goal in five minutes, it's a three from Yarbrough. Vincent has 16 points. Estel fumbled it away, right to nice Stone. Nice pass by Stone. Daniels from Stone. You know things are going right when the fumbled balls wind up in the basket on good passes. Yarbrough hit one from the other side a moment ago. Now he adds one on the opposite side of the floor. Back-to-back three-pointers by Yarbrough, 19 points. Hawkins penetrates the jump stop, missed it, followed by Estel. Boy, Kentucky doing everything well. Tennessee did not block out. Marquise Estel with an easy offensive rebound. Now if they could just locate Yarbrough on those three-point shots, here he is again. Another three. Yarbrough got another. Vincent Yarbrough. Right side of the floor, left side of the floor, straight away. Three times three for Vincent Yarbrough. Better locate him. That's what Tubby's saying to his team. 30-second timeout, and Tubby's not happy. Let's go back and take a look at Vincent Yarborough. He hit three threes in a row. Let's take a look at the one in the middle. This one's right on the other side, opposite the bench, and he nails that one. Vincent Yarborough, really the only shining star in what has been a very dull night for this Tennessee offense. Still nine minutes and 21 seconds remaining, so plenty of time for Tennessee to come back. And thanks to the three-point sharpshooting of Vincent Yarbrough, they're within 14 points. Seven of 15 shooting and 50% from the arc. 22 points for Vincent Yarbrough. So Yarbrough was actually 0 for 3 going into that uh, little triumvirate of shots right there. Full court pressure from Tennessee as Tubby Smith gets his starters back in except for Marvin Stone for Parker. And they beat the press and Stone fumbled it. Higgins though stepped out of bounds and Kentucky gets another shot. They had a layup if Stone makes the catch. On the nice pass from Keith Bogans, they did a nice job of reversing the ball against the Tennessee pressure. This crowd wants some defense out of these volunteers. Saul Smith for three. Did a flop afterwards and didn't get the call as Higgins brings it up court for Tennessee. Woods, he didn't waste any time. He let Yarbrough it go. Again. Yarbrough, he scored 11 straight points. I'm on that back. I'll carry you. That's what Vincent Yarbrough is telling his club right now. And it's back to a 12-point Kentucky lead. Vincent Yarbrough single-handedly bringing the balls back. Fitch penetrates and scores with a baseline drive. And a freshman shot quiet them. Eight points for Fitch. 81-67. Yarbrough launches another three. That one air ball. Probably forced that one. Fitch for Kentucky. Here's Tayshawn Prince. He's on target. Two big baskets. One by Fitch, one by Prince. Has taken this crowd completely out of this game again. Five straight Kentucky points after Yarbrough had been on fire. Tayshawn Prince now with 24 points in the game. 
Harris Walker playing with four fouls re-enters the Tennessee lineup and itchy trigger finger Woods takes a seat. Season high for the Wildcats. Ron Slay is going to return for the balls and Jason Parker for the Cats. And uh, Isaiah Victor at the free throw line for Tennessee. And your point about him having a quiet game remains in effect. Mm -hmm. Nine points, four rebounds. Garber is going to take a breather right now. Jerry Green getting him out of there after that uh, flurry that he had. 11 straight points scored by Vincent Yarbrough. Gonna let him catch his breath for the stretch run with 8-10 left. They started play. Uh, Kentucky grabbed the ball. It's actually a one and one. Victor made the first one. Kentucky wasn't going to let him shoot the second one. Saul Smith with backcourt pressure from Harris Walker. And Kentucky's lead, 84-69. Parker out with a good high post screen up there for Bogans. Fitch stripped away by Grindstaff for a moment. Here's Parker spinning and drawing the foul. Time to get great balance in their offense right now. Yes, they've done well with their three-point shooting, but when they go inside, they're getting a lot of success in there, particularly from Parker. You must have a good balance scoring machine. You're going to do it outside, you've got to do it inside, too. Look at Parker with this nice spin move inside. That was a bad-looking free throw. A line drive hit the back of the rim. Only 46% coming into this game. It's a part of his game he needs to work on. Especially uh, playing the way he does. Back to the basket, low post. He's going to get fouled a lot. Missed them both. Six of 12 free throw shooting for Kentucky. The lone sad part of their game. Here's Higgins missing a three. Smith can't get the rebound. Walker has it to Victor. Victor up and under draws a foul, and Ron Slay is limping in midcourt. Tayshawn Prince commits the Kentucky foul, his third. Let's go back down inside and watch the foul by Prince on Isaiah Victor. You got to make sure you can catch the ball in the right position, far enough away from the guy who's making the pass and be able to move and maneuver underneath. I'm not sure where that one came from unless he undercut him. Wasn't much foul, but it's Tayshawn's third. And Victor sinks the free throw. Here's Vincent Yarbrough. He's back in for Grindstaff. As Jerry Green's going to put his star back on the court and see if he can catch the Cats. Actually, he's going to take Slay's pl uh, place. I think Slay's got a little bit of a foot injury. And Prince goes to the bench, not happy. Marvin Stone has come in. As Tayshawn called for that last foul, and they didn't think he'd fouled him. Victor hits again at the free throw line. And so the Kentucky lead trimmed again. It's 84-71, seven minutes, 37 seconds remaining. Full court pressure from Tennessee. Kentucky fans all too familiar with the way the Wildcats have let leads dissipate this season as Bogans lays it in. Another assist by Saul Smith. Bogans has 18 points, and Saul has nine assists. They exploited the pressure defense that time to get the layup. Kentucky's hitting this half almost 70%, more of what we saw in the first half. Look at that. Vincent Yarbrough with an acrobatic move. 26 for Vincent. Yarbrough having one of his better games of the year. It is, in fact, a career high, 26 points for the junior from Cleveland, Tennessee. Parker wants it inside. Against Victor. Stripped away. The reach-in hands knocked it away. Here's Harris Walker. Tried a no-look and threw it away. Oh, my goodness. Here's Bogans. Finger rolls it through. Nice play. What would Jerry Green be thinking when he sees his team mounting a comeback with numbers on the fast break and the man with the ball tries a no look? 
Yarbrough trying to get him back in this game again. Good move by Grinstaff, and he loses it. Fitch. The stone, I think, was intended for Parker. It's off stone, off his hands and out of bounds. And Kentucky mishandles one. What's going on here? Yeah, let's go back and take a look at Vincent Yarbrough's two points, which gives him his career high for a single game in this wonderful career at Tennessee. 26 big points for him today. Career high for Vincent. As Kentucky's just turned it over for the 14th time, and Stone, for the second time, saw one go off his hands out of bounds. He takes a seat next to Tubby. Daniels is in. Just over six minutes left. Game's turned sloppy. Victor spinning, and Parker blocked it, but got him on the arm. That's four on Jason. Nice spin move out there. You know what, Parker is not familiar with that kind of territory to defend. He needs to be a little bit closer to that basket. Auburn continues to lead Arkansas. That's the final now. As you mentioned, the dogs break the losing streak. Alabama, tough one at home against Carolina tonight. And uh, the Bulldogs looking for the regular season sweep against their old rivals, cling to a three-point lead. And in the ACC, Virginia beat Duke by two. Fitch barely saved it from Yarbrough. Bogans to Parker for the jam. Bogans with another assist. Even when they lose the basketball and they come up with a loose ball, they're able to finish it with a basket. They're up to 90 now. Six assists for Bogans as Victor. And one as he takes it to the rim. Isaiah Victor beginning to establish himself offensively on that end. Put it on the floor and got to the basket very quickly. Let's go back and watch Isaiah Victor right here. Once he gets the ball, he's very good at getting down inside with it. He has 16 points coming alive finally in this second half after the slow start. He's done a lot of that damage at the free throw line. He has 14 of his 16 in the second half. And that's his 11th free throw. It's no good. Parker gives it up to Daniels. Kentucky has it, leading 90 76. Parker and Slay in a wrestling match. And Ron Slay is called for the push, demonstrating. What was going on? <laughs> I'm sure that wasn't a dance of some type. <laughs> what could have been? <laughs> Four on Ron. Got the start tonight. A rare start. He's been coming off the bench and giving uh, these volunteers a big lift when he comes in there. He's, he's always uh, important to their instant offense. He's been able to do that, but tonight the offense is really on the side of Kentucky. Parker, another bad looking free throw, but Fitch, the offensive board, and his shot no good. Parker likes it in a little closer. Jason jams it through. He's hit all five of his field goals. He's missed all of his free throws. That's consistency, Larry. <laughs> well, that time Eric Daniels battling with Ron Slay inside, and Daniels is going to pick up the foul. Let's go back and take a look. This, this after another missed free throw by Jason Parker. Once he gets inside, I said he operates a little bit better when he's closer to the basket. Fitch comes up and throws one up for a prayer, and Parker's right there to throw it down. Twenty-four free throws attempted by Tennessee, and 13 by Kentucky. Neither team hitting free throws very well. That's typical for Kentucky, not for Tennessee. Tennessee's third in the SEC, just under 70% at the line. They're hitting 60% tonight. And Kentucky, 46%. Parker rebounds the miss, and Smith pushes for Kentucky. Just under five minutes on the clock. Stolen by Walker. Stole the entry pass from Fitch. Yarbrough. They say last touch by Kentucky, though it appeared that Victor had a hand on it. Tennessee controls 28 to shoot. 
Pretty nice defensive play that time by Harris Walker to get over in front of the post play and uh, get that steal before they had a chance to set up. And Kentucky's going to call a timeout. It comes with four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this SEC East battle as the Wildcats look for their sixth straight win. And if they're able to hold off the Volunteers, they would take a giant step toward that SEC East title. And should Tennessee lose, it would sound the death knell. 24 points on the game for Tayshawn Prince. And Tayshawn's back in the game. 92-77 Kentucky. Ron Slay. Stone fouling. mentioned earlier how much Keith Bogans enjoyed playing against Tennessee at least his numbers say that in the first three games against the Vols averaging 19 points and five rebounds what's he done tonight 20 points four rebounds plus six assists I'd say that's a pretty good line good night's work Slay off the front rim gets his 15th point Grindstaff back for the balls Hathaway goes out. Good free throw shooter is Slay. Slay's actually had a pretty good scoring evening. He only averages 12 a game, and I think that's 16, did you say? 16, and it's been an uneven night for him, but at least he's ended up uh, with some pretty good numbers. Pressure defense from Tennessee. Saw Smith turned it over, fell down, lost his footing, and then the ball dribbled out of bounds. Might have been those springs in those shoes. I'll tell you what, that's about the fourth or fifth time I've seen that tonight. 17 turnovers for the Wildcats. Those are those shoes with the uh, Boeing in them. <laughs> Boeing that's a, that's that time that's a on the It's a term we don't get to use very often. Well, missed shots. <laughs> Ron Slay muscles it in. 92-81. Tennessee won't go away. Look at Prince handle the basketball. There's your power forward bringing it up. Bogans, and he's fouled. He'll shoot one plus one. Brian Staff is first. Brian Staff goes out as Isaiah Victor comes back in for the Volunteers. Isaiah Victor, uh, the Kentucky native, was one game under 500 against the Wildcats, hoping for a victory tonight to at least say, well, I was at Tennessee. They didn't get the best of us. Bogans misses a free throw. Another Kentucky free throw miss, leaving the door slightly ajar. Walker for three. Big basket, Harris Walker. They're coming back. They're just down eight. Now Kentucky once again has let a big lead dissipate. They were ahead by as many as 19. So who do you go to? Tayshawn Prince. He missed that one. Fitz fouled on the follow after he got the offensive rebound. He always finds a way to be around the basketball. Gerald Fitz, this freshman, just seems to magically appear wherever the ball is. Watch again. The miss by Prince. Who's there to grab it? Fitz. And he got it inside against Isaiah Victor and Vincent Yarborough. Fourth foul on Yarbrough. That's huge. And finally, a Kentucky player makes a free throw. That breaks an 8 nothing run by the Volunteers over the last two and a half minutes. Second one, no good. Slay with a rebound. Tennessee still alive. Walker. Here's Slay, nice dish, and Victor laid it in. Nicely done. Slay. Slay with a terrific pass. And with three minutes left, Tennessee's within seven. Marvin Stone down deep, roll off. And Walker comes away with it for Tennessee. Victor spins, and a foul. 
Marvin Stone commits the personal foul. Good spin move by Isaiah Victor that time against Stone. And what was looking like a very difficult shot, watch Victor turn. I think he got him on the arm. Just enough of a foul to cause it to come up a little short. Victor has 18 points. The Kentucky native goes back to the free throw line. 10-1 run over the last three minutes. I'll tell you one thing with these volunteers, they have not given up. They have battled back. Isaiah Victor has hit 8 of 11. Now 8 of 12 at the free throw line tonight. And Stone goes out. Marquise Estel into the Kentucky lineup. 16 and a half for Victor after scoring only two in the first 20 minutes of play. Second one is good. And a timeout. Kentucky has gone nearly two and a half minutes without a point. And Tennessee has closed within six. Back after these messages from your local SEC station. Tennessee's turn to make the big comeback. They trail by 19 in this half. But they have come storming back behind Vincent Yarborough and Isaiah Victor. They're in the midst of an 11-1 run at the moment, having hit four of their last five shots. Kentucky's gone two and a half minutes without scoring. It has turned it over twice, and here's another. Good trap in the corner by Tennessee. They got it in there, and Fitz could go nowhere with the basketball, and they've got it back and a chance to whittle into this Kentucky lead. Watch this. Now, Fitz gets it. He should give it up in a hurry. Don't get trapped in that position. That's 18 Kentucky turnovers. This is the closest the game has been since eight and a half minutes in the first half when Kentucky was up 28-22. Estel poked it away for a moment. Victor. Isaiah Victor gets the roll. Nice move. Nice hook right across. I almost stole it again. 21 for Victor, and Tennessee's within four. Two minutes left in the game. Heath Bogans spins, shoots, no good. And here's a battle taking place over in front of the Kentucky bench. It's Ron Slay, and I don't know who the Kentucky player was. Slay and Bogans. And Tony Harris has to be restrained by his teammates and sent back. Ankle didn't appear to be bothering him much as he raced down there to try to get in the fight. I want to tell you what, he was running as hard as he could run to the other end down there. See if we can sort it out. Here's the replay. Let's go back and see what happens. It's all in front of the Kentucky bench right here. Now, Bogans is trying to come up with a basketball to tie up right oh, there. Yeah. Slay with a takedown. Yeah. That's his fifth foul, and it's also an intentional foul call on Ron Slay. No question about that one in my mind. I'm not sure what the officials have called right now. They've called an intentional foul they on have Slay. called an intentional foul. And it's his fifth. And what, what an inopportune time for that to happen to Tennessee. Tennessee had all the momentum. They had everything going their way. They had scrapped back to within the game, and suddenly... Not only do they lose Slay, but Kentucky has, will have free throws and the ball. Tom, let me tell you, there's one other point in this, too. Slay has fouled out. But what about Tony Harris as a member of the Tennessee Volunteer basketball team leaving the bench and going to the other end of the Kentucky bench? Is that, in fact, a technical foul for him to leave that bench and go down there? Well, I thought the, it was a clear takedown by Slay. He wrapped him up and rolled him over. I didn't think there was any call, any question about the call. Well, the officials are reviewing the tape right now. Well, it wouldn't be Kentucky, Tennessee without. It is again. They had him on the ropes. Now watch this right here. Uh, 
Now maybe they're looking at some other people getting in the middle of it right in front of the Kentucky bench of course Isaiah Victor's over there somebody bumps him Harris Walker is there Saul Smith is there both Jerry Green and Tubby Smith was the first sack of the game the volunteers football is their game you know Well, they finally got everything calmed down but they're now they're looking and the officials now are going to confer with the uh, two head coaches I guess they've made a decision on what they're going to do well the word we had was that uh, an intentional foul called on Slay it's his fifth foul Now they're going back and review something else. Roger Roebuck and Dave Burchett, producer director in the truck. And we're going to see another replay. This is uh, Bogans and Slay. Slay hauls him down and rolls him over. And then uh, and somebody that looked like uh, Hawkins shoved Isaiah Victor. Looked like the Kentucky player shoving in there and wrestling with him. Marvin Stone's in the middle of things there. So trying to sort things out, and it's uh, conceivable there could be some suspensions from the league office resulting from this melee. And right now we're going back to play with Keith Bogans ready to step to the free throw line. Jerry Green trying to calm his team down and explain things. Mike Wood, the official, trying to get everything going, getting Tennessee out of the huddle. They have uh, removed Tony Harris from the Tennessee bench. He has been ordered removed from the Tennessee bench. Now, if this is an intentional foul, it can't be intentional because what they're saying is now they're lining up on the side. I, I assume they're just saying it was a uh, personal foul. Bogans hits the first. So apparently it was just a... Uh, a common foul common foul in an uncommon way Tom your point about the fact that Tennessee had all the momentum going their way is exactly right but they're still in this game they're only down six with a minute 53 Bogus at 22 Harris Walker in a hurry got it great layup what was he quick down the floor Timeout, Tennessee. Harris Walker, like a racehorse, galloped down the floor and laid it in for double figures. And more importantly, it pulls Tennessee back within four. And nobody from Kentucky there to stop him. Well, look at that maneuver. That was outstanding. Very quickly down the floor. Bogans makes two free throws. Walker comes right back with this driving layup, this floater high off the glass. And Tennessee with a timeout has one timeout remaining. 147 on the clock. Kentucky Vandy, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Some of you will see that. Others will see LSU and Arkansas. One forty-seven here, 95-91. Kentucky with Tennessee setting up in the full court press.
Prince needs help. Calls timeout. Tennessee had everybody covered. And Tayshawn Prince calls for the timeout to prevent the turnover. It's a 30. Nobody moving to the ball. Tennessee doing a good job of face guarding, not allowing anyone to get to that baseline where the ball is. Now one timeout left for Kentucky. So the timeout's one apiece. And my point about Tennessee having the momentum remains in effect. They had everybody covered there. Kentucky had to spend a timeout to prevent the turnover. Wildcats trying to hold on for dear life with this Tennessee onslaught as the Volunteers have closed from 19 down to within four. Possession arrow in favor of Tennessee. Double bonus both ends of the court and one full timeout each way. Tennessee has hit six of their last seven shots. Estel, through a bad pass. Grindstaff has it for Tennessee. Grindstaff gets it back, and Yarbrough and got that one. What a game from Vincent Yarbrough. He has 31 points, and he'll go to the free throw line with a chance to make it a one-point game. Terrible pass that time by Estel, and a good defensive play by Grindstaff. Watch this right here. He throws the ball down low to Saul Smith's feet. Grinstaff is right there to pick it up, bounce it off, and Yarborough with a three-point chance and to help close Tennessee within one. That's correct. His point total, 28, shooting for 29. No good. Hogan's high for the rebound. Kentucky's lead is two, 135, and counting. Hogan wants it one on one. Here's Smith. He says, let's recycle and set it up. Shot clock at 12. Fitch. Eight to shoot. They've got to go. Bogans. Five to shoot. Three to shoot. Bogans lets it go. No good. Fitch the offensive rebound. He's and a reach in again. foul on Higgins. Fitch comes up big again for Kentucky. He has 11 rebounds, none bigger than that offensive rebound. I'm telling you, he just finds a way to get to the ball. He is not a good free throw shooter, though, about 66%. And tonight he's hit two of four. Clutch free throw by the freshman. Gerald Fitch, the freshman from Macon, Georgia. Clutch plays down the stretch. Estel slowly walks to the Kentucky bench, and Marvin Stone is in. Fitch has six offensive rebounds, 11 total. Two clutch free throws big by the freshman. Ones. Well, those were big for Fitch and for Kentucky. One minute left, Kentucky by four. Staff in traffic blocked by Prince. And Prince is fouled by Higgins. Brian Staff wanted the foul call. No whistle. Prince the block. And now to the free throw line. Let's go back and take a look at what Jerry Green is complaining about. The fact that he didn't get this call underneath. Brian Staff trying to create something down underneath, underneath on the baseline. Good fake on Bogans. Does he go in and get blocked? I didn't see any foul right there. From that angle, it's hard to see. Might have gotten him with the body. Was hard to tell. Tayshawn Prince sinks the free throw. Another sparkling game for the junior from Compton, California. 25 points. He's hit 9 of 13 field goals. 6 of 7 from three-point line. Got them both. Four big free throws by Kentucky at the end when they had struggled through most of the game. Harris Walker and Smith fell down. Timeout Tennessee. They take their final timeout. Saul Smith fell down, leaving Walker all alone to lay it in. And the lead is 99-95. And dad tells son, what are you doing? Let's go back and take a look again. Harris Walker with the basketball brings it to length of the floor. Pushing, pushing. Now watch Saul Smith. He just simply goes down on the nice maneuver that time by Harris Walker. But he got his, his feet tangled up. 
I'll tell you, Harris Walker's played a good second half for Tennessee. What a game. What a game. Well, it's had twists and turns. And uh, everything but the uh, Kornikova virus uh, here tonight <laughs> in Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> Our Ice House players of the game. Tayshawn Prince, 26 points. And Vincent Yarbrough, career high, 28 points. You won't find two better players than those two as they led their respective teams tonight. Tennessee led by nine early. Kentucky turned it over five times the first four minutes or so. Wildcats came back in the second half. Kentucky led by as many as 19 before Yarbrough led the Tennessee comeback. They got within two. And now with 41.5 seconds left, Tennessee's out of timeouts. They trail by four. Kentucky has gone since the 505 mark without a field goal. Their last seven points have been at the free throw line where they've hit seven of eight. Bogans trapped, knocked out of bounds. And Kentucky will get it back with 39 seconds. I think Woods might have gotten a poke in the eye there. Give him a moment to collect himself. Into Bogans. Fans wanted a walk as he went down. Here's Saul Smith. And Kentucky almost threw it away. Smith threw a dangerous pass, deflected out of bounds by Yarbrough. Saul Smith telling Stone to come forward and get the pass, and his dad came over and says, You bring it up. <laughs> Tennessee's going to have to foul here soon. And there it is. They didn't want to foul Tayshawn Prince, however. Not much choice at that point as Higgins fouls him and puts Prince back at the line for two. More twists and turns than a suspense novel in this one. First one team, then the other. A little melee thrown in for good measure. And the two stars of their respective teams, Prince and Yarborough, as advertised, playing outstanding basketball. And Kentucky makes another free throw. Three in a row now for Prince. And five in a row for Kentucky here at the end. Their last eight points from the free throw line, they've hit eight of nine. So when it mattered, Kentucky was able to hit the free throws. Prince, two more. 28 points for Tayshawn Prince. And now another outstanding game. Tennessee needs threes. And they need them in a hurry. Woods has an open one. No good. Yarbrough heads it back to Woods. Here's Higgins. Yarbrough. Walker, a long one. No good. Prince skies for the rebound. And will dribble up court. He's fouled before he can get into front court by Higgins with 3.9 seconds. What a game. Kentucky let a 19-point lead just about get away from them. Tennessee came back within two, but clutch free throw shooting by the Wildcats. And what about the fifth foul on Ron Slay? That could have been pivotal. He, of course, is key to Tennessee's hopes for success. He wrestled Bogans to the ground and was fouled out of the game when Tennessee appeared to have the Wildcats on the ropes. But you know, Tom, Tennessee came right back after that. They did not lose the momentum. They continued to play hard and had a chance to really pick this thing up, but Kentucky put them away with free throws. And that will not count as the horn sounds and Tubby Smith and the Wildcats managed to hold off the Tennessee Vols. And Kentucky, in four of their last five games, shooting over 50%. Tonight they shoot 61%, but game now 16 and 7 on the season, beating Tennessee 103-95, thanks to 14 of 21 shooting from the three-point line. Let's go courtside to Larry. All right, Tom, thanks. And I'm standing here with Tubby Smith. And Tubby, I don't believe I've ever been involved in a Kentucky-Tennessee game that was any wilder than that. How about you? It was pretty wild, me either. But um, I certainly got to give them a lot of credit. I thought, you know, you know, I, I mean, Yarborough, Yarborough 
came out and shot and made three th straight threes and got him back in the game. I thought that kid showed a lot of poise, you know, after that incident to make free throws and uh, to keep their composure. And that's a sign of a championship type team. So we came here to get a win and we, we're leaving with the win. That's the most important thing. Tubby, you got up by 19 in the second half and you had everything pretty much going your way. And then all of a sudden, Tennessee put on a surge and really came back at you. What were they doing to make it so tough on you? Well, we just weren't defending them. They were taking us off the dribble, pounding inside. We didn't, um, and we weren't really uh, showing the, the type of um, competitive fire that we needed. I think our guys might have thought the game was over, and we've had that problem most of the year. But I've got to give a lot of credit to Tennessee. They showed the, you know, they had the guts and the type of fortitude to hang in there and keep the pressure on us, and we just couldn't um, capitalize at the offensive end. You know, turnovers hurt us. And when they started making shots like that and the momentum and the crowd got back into it, it gave us a tough, tough time. Let me talk to one of your stars here, okay? Thanks, Tubby, okay. Tayshawn, outstanding game. You were lighting the threes up tonight. Tom and I couldn't say enough complimentary things about what you were doing. You must have felt it pretty well tonight. Oh, yeah, man. The stroke has been there, not just for me, but for my teammates as well. We, just, we knew this was a very big game. You know, Tennessee had a, a long road trip, and they, we knew they was going to have their crowd behind them in this game. So we just had to come out and get off to a good start because – they're a very great athletic basketball team, and we'd have let them get out early, and which they really did, but we had to respond, and we did, and uh, it was just a great all-out effort by everybody. Did you guys get a little bit nervous when Tennessee made that comeback? Most definitely. I mean, the type of basketball team that we have, you know, we weren't nervous, but we just had to stay poised, and I think, you know, once all that uh, all that stuff happened, we just had to stay, stay positive, stay poised, and that's what we had to do. Okay, Tayshawn, congratulations. A big win for you guys. Thanks, Tom? Big star tonight, Tayshawn Prince. He was indeed, Larry. Tayshawn with a career-high 30 points. Vincent Yarborough, Tennessee, a career-high 28 points as they matched baskets throw most of the night. Back for final comments in a moment. Crowned by beating Tennessee and completing the season sweep, a regular season sweep of the Volunteers. Here are the stats for the game. Kentucky shooting 61%, 14 of 21 from three-point range. They won the rebounding battle as well. And despite the turnovers, are able to hold on and beat Tennessee after the Volunteers had closed within two after one time trailing by 19. Tayshawn Prince, a career-high 30 points, the top scorer in the game. Keith Bogans had 22. Vincent Yarborough had his career-high 28 points in a losing cause for Tennessee. Isaiah Victor, the Kentucky native, had 21 points for the Volunteers. So Tennessee goes to five and six in conference play. Kentucky now nine and two as they win their sixth straight game. Tom Hammond for Larry Conley saying so long from Knoxville. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot SEC coverage.